Now, with so. freezing temperatures <laughs> and brisk winds predicted for the Easter weekend, spring feels like a long way off at the moment. But there are a few dafts around, some on my balcony. Yeah, well, Miranda has <laughs> been to meet a man who looks at dafts and the world around us, for that matter, mm. in a very different way. Secured behind the gates of an abandoned Cold War military base in Kent lies an artist's studio like no other. Photographer Nick Vesey has been x-raying objects, both man-made and natural, to reveal the inner beauty that's normally hidden under the surface. This door it weighs a tonne. In fact, it weighs 1,250 kilograms. It's um, made of steel and lead, and that keeps the radiation in here. OK. So I'm out here in the safe area, but this is where all the nasty stuff goes on. Right. And this building is designed to contain the radiation. Now, the question is, how on earth did you get into x-raying things? Well, in my late 20s, I was trying to make a career as a photographer. I wasn't really doing that well, to be honest. Um, and I was quite into experimental photography. And I had the opportunity to take an x-ray of a cola can. Um, I didn't have a clue how to do it, but I took the project on. And it was one of those life-changing moments. And I knew then that I didn't want to do anything else in my life. And when you're playing around with different objects, presumably you have to treat each object in a different way. In a nutshell, the heavier or thicker the object, the more radiation you need to get through it. As X-rays pass through an object, energy particles, photons, are absorbed at different rates and the patterns show up on the X-ray image. Dense materials such as bones show up clearly, but softer material is almost see-through. Nick's subjects come in all shapes and sizes, so he needs a special machine. It's like a giant water hose. <laughs> yeah, it's got a uh, high voltage electricity going towards it and water to cool it because the science of x-rays basically are there's electrons flying around in a vacuum and that gets very hot, so you need the water to cool that while that's going on. Nick will x-ray anything and everything, but his real passion is x-raying nature. I love finding natural forms and exploring you know, the internal structure of the world that surrounds us. I think we're all so busy, we don't really have time to appreciate it. Don't stop and look, do no, we? Because this Stormback Ray here is just beautiful inside. I mean, you know, when you look at a ray, it doesn't maybe look that exciting, and then you've got its internal organs and structure, and you've got the thorns on the tail there. And This is otherworldly. Yeah. The jaws and how it yeah. must clamp and crush the crustacea that it eats. Yeah. And you can actually see tiny little bits of shrimp or prawn in the stomach. So, what about a spring challenge? What would a daffodil look like x-rayed? Because daffodils are so delicate, they need just a small amount of radiation for a few seconds. Too much radiation and the end image would be overexposed. OK, so it's 40 kilovolts. That's the amount of x-ray. 40, bang on, there we go, yep. Yeah. And then the time is 30 seconds. OK, hit number one. Hit number one, yeah. this one here? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And once the X-ray is taken, it takes about 15 minutes to process. Here it comes. Ooh. Oh, wow. That is a thing of beauty, isn't it? You know, it sort of takes me back to A-level biology days where you do a dissection of a plant or a flower and, and you draw all these little bits and there you've got it right in front of you, but for real. In the stem, the internal workings of the daffodils show up. You can see the tubes, which are the transport system of the plant that move food and water around. And the delicacy, I think, as well. Just of the, you know, you know the petals are really thin and fine, but when you see them like this, they just look as, as, as thin as tissue paper, don't they? It's funny because it's a two-dimensional picture, right? But it looks so three-dimensional, doesn't it? It's like it you're going, it, you're going in one side, through the centre, and then back out the back. Mm. I'm never going to look at a daffodil in the same way again. I'm always going to be transported into the middle of it and remember what we're seeing on this image right now. They're mesmerising those, aren't they? Beautiful. Yeah. Well, we asked mm. Nick to take a few more photos of a mm. few things that you might recognise, uh, oh. Joanna, with a few little connections okay. uh, to maybe some characters of the past. Well, this um. is probably <laughs> one that's probably more of a patsy thing, maybe. Than what do we reckon about this, reckon? 
and my joke. Oh. Ah, there it is. But doesn't doesn't that look refreshing as doesn't an X-ray? Bottle of champagne. champagne. It's like it iced. It oh does. yes. Mm. Obviously, one glass right. has hit the deck. But yeah, <laughs> they've drunk it all. <laughs> I got one more. Got, uh, now, what do you think this is? Here we go. It's quite obvious. It's a, a yes. Is that a bag? It's a. It looks like a kind of patsy. It's bag. a patsy bag. It's it a, a hyperdermic. Earrings and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>